we are back for another deep dive into a major Walking Dead character. This week we're breaking down all the amazing and problematic moments from the brave man who used to be a cop and holds the proud title of Judith's dad. That's right, it's time to shave your head and slap your scalp. We're talking Shane. I'm Woody Tondorf. Johnny O'Dell is hanging by his ankles above a vat of acid in my basement. And this is I See Dead People. Let's start with the comics. This is how the structure of the show goes. We first meet Shane, last name unknown, in the very first issue of The Walking Dead. He and Rick, who are both police officers, engage in a shootout with an escaped convict. Rick gets shot and taken to the hospital, where he stays in a coma. When the apocalypse hits, Shane is forced to leave his friend and relocate near Atlanta with Lori and Carl. In the coming days, Shane and Lori bond over Rick's presumed demise and, in a moment of weakness, have a wild night of passion where they both awkwardly shout Rick's name at climax, but still manage to form a relationship. Enter Rick! After waking up from his coma, getting healed by Morgan, and trekking to Atlanta, Rick finally returns. Shane is initially ecstatic to see his partner alive, but quickly begins to spiral when Lori breaks things off. Kinda like everyone's least favorite Michael Bay movie, Pearl Harbor. But I just wanna know why. Just tell me that, will you please? Just tell me why. Still, Shane obsesses over Lori and lets his anger bleed into separate confrontations with Rick. In issue six, the two bicker about their living situation. Rick thinks they should find a safer location, while Shane believes the government will save them. This forces Lori to side with Rick, which enrages Shane and causes him to storm into the woods. Healthy way to let out your anger. Rick follows and Shane holds him at gunpoint, telling him he should have stayed dead so he and Lori could be together. Suddenly, Carl shoots him through the neck, killing him. Nine issues later, Rick digs up Shane's body and discovers he's reanimated, so he shoots him in the head, killing him for good. Why did Rick decide to exhume his best friend? Why did he wait nine issues? Who cares? The Punisher's coming! Call me the Punisher, ain't that right? The big bad Punisher! In the show, we first meet Shane Walsh, played by the incredible John Bernthal, in the first episode, Days Gone By. After discussing his hot takes on women and global warming with his childhood friend and now police partner Rick, the two get a call about convicts on the run. Shane Tomahawk dunks his lunch into a trash can, and the two head off in hot pursuit. I mean, let's play that one again. Look at that form. They shoot and kill the first few guys, but a sneaky third criminal nearly fatally shoots Rick in the side. Shane kills the guy and helps rush Rick to the hospital, where he stays by his side as long as he can before the apocalypse hits. When the hospital goes to shit, he barricades a comatose Rick in his room and leaves for Atlanta with Lori and Carl. On the road, they get caught in traffic, where they meet Carol, Ed, and Sophia. After witnessing the military firebomb Atlanta, they decide to hole up at a nearby campsite with Dale and other survivors. Unfortunately for Shane, Rick eventually wakes up, gets patched up by Morgan, gets into a tank with Darth Maul, survives a horde in the city by befriending Glenn and covering himself in guts, and finally returns to his family like that dog at the end of Homeward Bound. Spoilers for Homeward Bound, but it's, it's lovely. Oh, Peter, I worried about you so. Lori and Carl are ecstatic to see him while Shane is obviously disappointed and takes his frustration out on Ed, who had just slapped Carol. This is actually my favorite Shane moment, so please add that to the wiki. When Rick and the gang leave for a supply mission, the camp gets attacked by walkers and Shane specifically protects Lori and Carl. Rick and the crew return and help them out, and the two of them argue about who's to blame for the attack. This might be a hot take, but I'm thinking I blame the walkers. Later, they bicker about their next steps. Shane wants to go to a military base, Rick wants to go to the CDC, and Carl wants to go to Legoland. Frustrated, Shane secretly aims his shotgun at Rick in the woods, but decides against shooting. Dale witnesses this and Shane tries to play it off. Jesus. Perhaps feeling guilty, Shane relents and agrees with Rick that they should go to the CDC, where they meet Dr. Edwin Jenner and his robotic voice assistant named Exposition. Jenner reveals there is no cure, so might as well get plastered and use the hot water. Shane pounds a bottle of brown liquor and then tries to have sex with Lori against her will, which is the moment I realized I can no longer root for this dude. Later, Jenner reveals he's blowing them all to kingdom fucking cum, so Shane executes an innocent death top monitor and threatens him into letting them escape. Cue the bad CGI explosion. It has not aged well. On to the military base. Unfortunately, they get caught in traffic and attacked by a small horde where Sophia disappears and everyone's forced to look for her. Instead of Sophia, they find a church and this CGI deer, which then gets hit by a bullet and that bullet also hits Carl. Rick sprints through the woods to a farm and begs its owner Herschel to save his boy. Shane drags along Otis, the guy who accidentally shot Carl, and volunteers to head out to find medical supplies. At a FEMA shelter, Shane and Otis quickly get surrounded by walkers. Knowing they won't make it, Shane shoots Otis with his last bullet, wrestles the supplies away from him, gets part of his hair ripped out, and dips as Otis is consumed. Hiding the murder, Shane shaves his head and looks more psychotic than Walter White. No, I, I can do better. Um, more psychotic than Ernst Blofeld and You Only Live Twice. No, um, Don Logan and Sexy Beast. I could do this all day, but let's move on. Yes! 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 Shane speaks at Otis's funeral, which is almost as fucked up as this scene from Tiger King. Because he's seen his boss. 
I were not building nuggets to that board. Later, he trains the survivors, including Carl, on how to shoot. He and Andrea have a private lesson at Wiltshire Estates and then bang in a car. Awesome. Dale eventually confronts Shane, which is hilarious, and Shane shows Dale how an actually intimidating guy threatens people. See, I'm the kind of man gun down his own best friend. What'd you think I'd do to some guy that I don't even like? Later, Glenn discovers Herschel's been keeping walkers in the barn, which sends Shane off the deep end. I mean, deeper end. This dude is in his own swimming pool of crazy at this point. Rick then tells him that Lori's pregnant, causing Shane to confront her later. She tells him, even if it's his, it is, that he'll never be the father. Pissed, Shane goes to fetch a bag of guns, of course, and finds them missing. He then finds Dale, who's hiding them in the woods. I have to kill you? Is that what it's gonna take? Uh, Dale, you're not, you're not fooling anybody, dude. Come on. He threatens his life again and returns to the farm to find Rick helping Herschel wrangle walkers into the barn. Admittedly, the optics of this are not super great. Shane makes a huge scene and opens the barn doors in front of everyone. Rick and the gang shoot them all until Sophia waits for that moment of drama and then emerges from the back. Rick kills her for good, and Shane later berates Herschel for knowing about Sophia. He claims he didn't know and that they need to leave now. Since leaving is apparently the theme of the season, Laurie heads out to find Rick but gets in the dumbest car accident of all time. Like, dumber than the car accident in the OC that killed Misha Barton and we never saw her on TV again. Shane finds her, lies to her about Rick returning, and takes her back to the barn. When she finds out he lied, Shane tells everyone he did it to protect her baby. Damn! Classic! Shane. Rick and the gang finally return with Herschel and a captive Randall. Shane thinks they should kill him, but Rick and Herschel are still undecided. Hopefully they don't let him do stand-up. That's a marvelous Mrs. Maisel joke. Anyway, Rick and Shane travel 18 miles away with a tied-up Randall to air everything out. Rick knows about Otis and the affair, and he wants him to stay away from his family. Shane says Rick can't protect his own family, which is a good one. Rick takes it up about how you'd expect. The two brawl, and Shane throws a wrench at him, but he dodges it better than White Goodman, and it goes through a window, causing walkers to pour out. Rick and Randall save Shane. Rick tells him he's the captain now, and the three of them head back. The farm gang decides it's best to murder Randall, causing Dale to leave, saying the group is broken. This group is broken. Still, Rick puts Randall on his knees and prepares to kill him when Carl tells him, Do it. Realizing this will probably turn his son into a bloodthirsty monster, Rick spares him and delays that by about a season. Later, they hear Dale screaming. A walker's on him and his guts are outside of his body, which is less than ideal. Rick can't put him out of his misery, so Daryl does it. Sorry, brother. The next day, Rick tells Shane he's going to free Randall, which really grinds his gears. Making matters worse, Lori tells him they'll never be together again, and she's changing their Netflix password. So Shane takes Randall into the woods and snaps his neck. Ah! Some people squeeze a stress ball, but we all vent differently. He tells the group Randall got the best of him and escaped, which absolutely no one believes. It was a buck 25 soaking wet. Trying to tell us he got the jump on you. Still, Shane and Rick head out to find him. Shane reveals he came out here to kill him, and he's a better husband and father than Rick will ever be. Rick gives him his gun and then stabs him in the heart. <laughs> Shane dies in his arms and then has crazy zombie brain sequences and reanimates. Walker Shane nearly kills Rick until Carl shoots him from behind, ending Shane for good. Like many dead characters, Shane made future cameos in the show as hallucinations. This one time in season three during the Woodbury attack, so much hair, and then in season nine during Rick's last episode. Burgers are great. Remember that? <laughs> he was the first character in the show to reanimate without getting bitten, and also the first character to turn into the Punisher on Netflix. Although Shane had an abbreviated, and let's just say problematic, run in both mediums, he still remains a fan favorite of the series today, because people are complicated. And that wraps up this week's episode of I See Dead People. What are your favorite Shane memories? Would you let John Bernthal shave your head and paint a skull on your shirt? I know I would. Make sure to like and subscribe to Skybound and check out our Walking Dead podcast, Talk Dead to Me. We're rewatching iconic episodes and interviewing old cast members. I'm Woody Tondorf, and we'll see you next time.